Music is geometry, and in this video we're going to look at what that even means and how it applies to the art of songwriting. And this is really essential stuff. It's fundamental to music theory, which is fundamental to songwriting. Because the fact that music is geometry is about the logic and structure of how music works, since music is all about patterns. So let's jump right in. Now when I say that music is all about patterns, it helps to start going a little philosophical, talking about the difference between music and noise. Noise is just chaos, it's chaotic sound. It is disorganized sound, and that's why we call it noise. Then there's music, and music is all about order. It's organized sound, which is why we call it music instead of noise. And if we were to say music theory, music theory is just really the study of the order of music. So in the world of sound, there's order in the chaos, and that order is music theory. It's the study of the actual practical patterns that make music possible. Music theory is a beautiful thing. The fact that sound can be organized like this makes music possible. Though music theory, the term music theory, has a bad reputation for being mysterious and complicated because a lot of people think music theory is music notation with all of these symbols. So in traditional notation like this, we have even more symbols than this. We have key signatures like sharps and flats. We have time signatures. And then like in scale diagrams, we have, you know, extra numerals like 1, flat 3, 4, flat 5, 5, flat 7. Or in guitar chord diagrams, we might have numbers that represent what strings or fingers to play. So those are open strings, finger 1, finger 2, finger 3. And all of these conflicting alphanumeric characters that make music seem more complex than it really is. Which is ironic because music theory is all about clarity and order. It's organized sound. And yet this this visual system of depicting music theory is chaos. It's visual chaos. It's more complex. So when I talk about the patterns of music, this is not what I mean. These depictions of music don't really show what the patterns are in music, and certainly not the geometry of music. So if traditional notation and diagrams like that are not music theory, if that is not really what music theory is, then what is it? Let's step back and look at what music theory is in the first place. Music theory, by definition, just means to see sound. The word theory comes from the Greek theoria, which means to look at, view, or see. So theory means to see, and music is sound. So to see sound is the definition of music theory. But if you want to really see sound, then it's not looking at music through these convoluted diagrams like this. A better way is to use the natural patterns of sight, color, to visualize the otherwise invisible patterns of sound, music. Where you take the 12 notes of the chromatic scale and then rearrange them into a special pattern called the circle of fifths that shows how all of the notes in music are harmonically related where the color wheel perfectly aligns with these 12 notes of the circle of fifths to visually represent how these notes are related. So you can see how the color wheel and the circle of fifths follow the same pattern. They are the same pattern. Only one is visible while the other is audible, but like two languages that tell the same story, they are essentially one. And then you just rearrange this pattern back into the chromatic scale that we use to actually form patterns like scales and modes and chords and progressions. Only now, with the color, it's easier to see how the notes of the chromatic scale form perfectly symmetrical relationships. And the reason they're symmetrical is because both the circle of fifths and the color wheel, circle and wheel, are cyclical patterns, where there's a natural geometry between all of the notes that's cyclical and symmetrical. Now, in total, there are six basic geometric patterns that form. The first one is the sharp four slash flat five between all of the notes. Basically, the tritones or complementary colors here form a star pattern. Then you have all of the four intervals, four and five in every key, which form this starburst pattern, a star between all of the notes. And then you have major three and flat six, which is a triangle between all of the notes in every key. And then you have flat three and six, which forms a square between all of the notes. And then there's two in flat seven, two interlocking hexagons, and flat two and seven, which is a dodecagon, really the chromatic scale. And together, these six patterns are fundamental and help shape all of the other patterns in music. Now, these six geometric patterns look really cool between all of the notes and the colors in music, but what's the practical application of all of this? Are these just pretty diagrams, or is there some use to it? There's definitely some use to it, 
and let me show you how. If we focus on just the key of C, for example, where C is one here, it is the polar opposite of its tritone G flat or the flat five. And so if we say, okay, this line right here is a mirror and around this mirror, we're gonna form different geometric patterns. You're gonna see that these patterns have some really important meaning. So again, if we say that the tritone and the tonic form a mirror, then around that line are notes four and five, which are the color show are harmonically related to C in the circle of fifths, purple, red, and red, orange are harmonically related to red, which makes sense. And you can see here how they are symmetrical around the tonic. And that's gonna come into play here in just a second. Then on either side of the four and five, flanking those notes are the three and flat six, again, around our line of symmetry down the middle there. And those notes form a triangle. And then again, in the key of C, down the line of symmetry, flanking the three and flat six on either side are the flat three and six. Those two notes are also symmetrical. And together with the tritone, they form a square, another geometric shape. And then fanning out even further on either side, we have the two and flat seven that are whole steps on either side of the tonic. And then the flat two and seven, which are half steps on either side of the tonic. So the practical application of all of this is that these geometric connections, these special relationships between notes inform all of the patterns that you play in music from scales and modes to chords and progressions. So for example, we might use nerd speak to say, a major second and a flat seventh. Or in geometric terms, we might say those are part of a hexagon. Or we might say flat second and major seventh, which are part of a dodecagon. Now that's really nerdy, but in layman's terms, those are just whole steps and half steps. And whole steps and half steps are used to form scales, like the major scale, and all of the modes that are derived from that pattern. So you can say scale, and that's fine, but it does really help to be a nerd to be able to use the terminology of music, and it helps to be a super nerd to understand that those intervals are really part of geometric connections because once you know that there's an order and a logic to those connections, then you can start to see way more. You don't have to just memorize whole steps and half steps. You understand that they're part of geometric patterns, and music is all about order and the chaos of sound, and so let's look a little more at another example. So looking at these scales and modes, for example, these are parallel modes in the key of C. If we see that the C Ionian mode or the C major scale is a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Really, these whole step intervals are part of a hexagon. These half step intervals are part of a dodecagon. And that's why this pattern works because music is audible geometry. These whole steps and half steps or intervals of major seconds and flat seconds if you're going in a clockwise direction, or flat sevenths and major sevenths if you're going in a counterclockwise direction, those geometric lines, those patterns, are what make this scale. Likewise, the Dorian mode is just another arrangement of whole steps and half steps. It's just segments of hexagons and dodecagons that make that pattern. And, and the same is true for all of the scales and modes. So in music, these two patterns, the hexagons and dodecagon, or the realm of intervals of two and seven, this is where scales are formed. And then looking at intervals of three and six, major three and flat six, or flat three and major six, in other words, triangles and squares, this is where chords are formed. These are the intervals that form chords. So for example, if we look at these basic triads, triads are just three note chords. If we take the major chord, it's a major third and a minor third, or part of a triangle and part of a square. Or the minor chord is part of a square and part of a triangle. The augmented chord is made, of, made up of two major third intervals or part of a triangle. And really the augmented chord itself is a triangle. All these chords are in the key of C, for example. And then a diminished chord is made up of two minor third intervals, which are part of a square. So while intervals of two and seven make up the scales, intervals three and six make up the chords. Chords are about intervals three and six. So then what about these last two, four and five? Well, sharp four, flat five is what gives us the symmetry. It's the connection between tritones, but then intervals four and five, this star right here, this pattern is all about 
progressions. To show you what I mean, if we have the circle of fifths, which is all of the notes in a color wheel pattern, this inner ring is major chords. So from C to G, G to D, D to A, A to E, and so on, this forms a ring of harmonically related chords. And then this middle ring is all of the minor chords that are also in a circle of fifths arrangement. And then this outer ring is all of the diminished chords in a key arranged also in a circle of fifths arrangement. So over here in the minor ring, you have C minor to G minor to D minor to A minor to E minor and so on following an order of fifths in a clockwise direction or in a counterclockwise direction from C minor to F minor to B flat minor to E flat minor and so on in a counterclockwise direction you have all of the fourths. So intervals of five in a clockwise direction or intervals of four in a counterclockwise direction inform chord progressions. So these geometric patterns inform progressions. The four and five inform progressions. Three and six inform chords and two and seven inform scales. Scales are super basic. From scales, we derive chords and then from chords, we derive progressions. So it can seem a little bit far out, a little groovy to say that music theory is about geometric patterns. Seems kind of like, whoa, that's cool, but maybe there's not a practical application. Yes, there is a practical application. These patterns totally inform everything in music. So that's just a quick look at the geometry of music, what it even means, how to apply it. And once you see how these patterns inform the order and organization of music, which is music by definition, you can really make use of these patterns to make really cool songs. So hopefully that was helpful. And if you liked it, please like and uh, comment on the video. If you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe, ring the bell for notifications and I will see you in the next video.